hello 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 thank you for clicking on that link welcome to jima speaks thank you for joining me on this podcast i very much appreciate the time you're making out it's not to be taken for granted and it is not being taken for granted yep we are on the eighth pill of the nine pill series in the censuses toolbox kit today we are looking at the final in the podcast for empower so this is finally the concluding part of the educate and empower appeal i had attempted to close on the previous podcast however the deteriorating health condition of british prime minister um yesterday the 7th of april meant that my intended last podcast which is titled 008c-1 and um, with the name i am empowered it had to be stretched a lot more and that's why i'm producing this podcast titled 008c-2 empowered to leave yes we are empowered to leave as a consequence of using these pills in this podcast or in this toolbox kit please refer to the first part titled 008c-1 i am empowered and that will give you a better view um, on the empowering ourselves series which is basically a foundation on how to reprogram and resocialize our minds for optimal health and wealth success this podcast will close us on the eighth pill on how to educate and empower ourselves our wealth and health depend on the programs in our minds what we have downloaded into our minds the things that have formed the philosophies of life with regards to optimal health and wealth so that's what i'm emphasizing on optimal health and wealth well with with this last podcast and on and on empower i will be taking us through what um what it is actually in in order to achieve what you need to do in order to achieve optimal health and wealth using the empower pill so i'm going to take us through um what that is and and how we are going to reprogram our minds with the outcomes of life that we desire most particularly with regards to creating optimal health now the same principles are going to apply to creating wealth however my focus this tribe's focus is on optimal health at least that's the direction i have right now okay so it's empowered to live empowered to wealth and health so um b- before i go into concluding on on the empower pill i just need to take us through what has become my tradition um so we are building a tribe of people who will come to understand that we have only one avenue open to us to socialize our subconsciousness and that is not going to happen through the traditional front door i mean the the the, the front door access has been bought and taken over by big four what, what i call the big four that's your big foodie your big pharma um your big telco and also your big cosmeceuticals and uh, it took me this long to realize that i left out one big industry okay i mean i don't understand how i could have done that i, I left out a um, big fine or big fin which which is my way of addressing big finance they are also big players so we have an official big five and then that means that big consumer is no longer a part of the big five and that's because we as consumers in my opinion okay are the victims here at least till we get resocialized which is the essence of the censuses tool kit so now we've gone through seven of the pills in the toolbox kit starting from stress at the top there we've gone through exercise nutrition sleep epigenetics and eugenics we've gone through sunlight we've gone through sex we are now on the education and empower pill i'm bringing this to an end today 
it's part of the nine tool kit. So there are nine pills in this toolbox kit. And the essence, the reason why we are doing this is to create a new discussion, a new conversation, a new awareness. And that is what we are doing through this series of Synthesis Toolbox Kit. We are currently on the Education and Empower. I've, done, I've gone through education, so I'm completing the Empower part of this. And what we are doing by going through all these nine pills is to get us to the ninth pill, which is the Success Pill. Success is meant to get us to a point where we have optimal five-star health and wealth. So in achieving the goals that we have set out to achieve in this in this tribe, like I did mention, the front door has been closed, bought over by Big Five. Okay, so the only way available to us is through what I call the back door, which really is through the grassroots, through communities, through families, and through individuals such as yourself. The front door has been bought by Big Five. Let's put that as a fact that we need to um, embrace. So, and then to put that fact, or that statement of fact into perspective, uh, I, will, I would want to ask us this question. Do we know the huge amounts of monies that are pumped in through the conventional front door? Now, now let, let me cite a fact here. Um, let, me give, uh, let me give statistics just for America alone. Now, taking one of the big fives, I'll, I'll take the most notorious of, of them all, Big Pharma. Now, Big Pharma has spent in excess of $3 billion just to lobby. And that's between 1998 and 2020, where we stand currently. They've spent much more money than than the other four in the industry or but the other four big part of the other four in the big five group okay now do we haven't gotten that information that fact do we think we stand a chance to change our current systems i mean through already established channels or systems we definitely don't so that means um we will need to get basically our heads examined if we hold true to the fact that or to the belief that we can get information or we can re reprogram our minds through the front door through conventional avenues we can only affect and affect change through the grassroots this is what we are about this is what this particular tribe is about okay so i needed to mention that just so we understand the full context of what exactly are we trying to get done through this channel, okay? And that is what it is, basically. Now, I'm gonna make a bold statement here, and then I would like to expunge a, a certain preconception from our memories, try and get it out, try and delete, okay? I, I mentioned during uh, and I did mention this during um, uh, my launch in, in Burj Khalifa on the 15th of February. And I would like to repeat again what that perception is. Okay. Or oh, basically what, in my opinion, motivates we as humans. Now, we as humans, uh, as human beings, are motivated by two states of being. And that's by pain and pleasure. We are motivated to reduce pain and to increase pleasure. It's a flip side um, relationship. I would like for you to check on my podcast, um, which was my launch. It's on my YouTube channel. It's the podcast um, on the 15th of February, 2020. So we're talking about the two things that motivate um, we as humans. Now, my question here is that, why do we wait for pain in order to gain the pleasure we want? Why do we have to wait for pain? And to put this in context with the recent happenings globally, why did Boris Johnson, when he was a Tory leader, when he was a hopeful um, to, to take over from and Theresa May, and that was sometime last year, why did he have to wait or why did he need to 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 be told 
by um, French doctors last year that he needed to lose weight in order to prevent himself from a chronic illness or chronic illnesses. Why? Okay. Now, that's because the, the, the inert capacity or inbuilt tendency of us humans is to wait to feel pain before we change that state. Now, my question is that why wait? Now, since I've mentioned Boris, my opinion on, on, on I have an opinion here on Boris, okay? My opinion on why Boris Johnson is going to beat the COVID-19 um, virus is, is this. You want to know why? I, I believe he's going to beat it. He's going to recover and get back to full optimal health. Okay, I'm not sure about optimal health, but he's going to get back to health. Not because he has the best medical team around him. He, um, he's going to beat the virus because he is a rugged fighter. He has a strong mind programmed in him when he must have been a kid, when he was growing up. So it is, it is natural for him to put up a fight. Okay. Now, we as a people are going to experience a surge of pain. It could take a whole load of people losing their lives before a whole load of us realize that we need to make decisive changes. Now, a change that is prescribed using part of the tools or the pills in this toolbox kit. We prescribe these changes. Hence, we've come up with the nine pills toolbox kit. When we talk about the power or the tool of empowerment, um, with reference to pain and pleasure, what we are saying is that for us to experience optimal health, we need to look at taking the high road of having to decide to drop off our current mindset philosophies. These are the philosophies that we hold passionately. And I'm, in, I'm, I'm, I'm mentioning with particular reference now to optimal health in order for us to replace with a different mindset, a different philosophy. And I'm saying this especially to my audience, if you don't believe you are in a state of homeostasis where your health is concerned. Now, some of us are already experiencing optimal health. And in that event, we in this tribe need your wealth of health. We need your wealth of experience in the area of health to pass on to other members of this tribe. Now, pain will come because we will be taking on familiar routes. When you take an unfamiliar route, it creates pain in you. But that is a lesser and better pain because the ultimate end result will bring us to a place of homeostasis with respect to our health. However, if we take the pleasure route at this point in time, okay, and we just douse on chemical um, prescriptions, the, the pharmaceutical nonsenses that we are giving, then whilst we experience the pleasure of immediate gratification to our health lives, the ultimate price we pay for not changing our philosophies when it comes to optimal health could cost us our lives and also could come with a huge medical bill attached to that. The pain that we will be experienced or rather that we, that we will experience will only change when we get inspired and transformed by the pleasure that we need to attain. And I repeat again, this comes at a huge cost and price. So we are going to experience pain when we go through change. However, with that pain comes a transformation into a state of pleasure. And that is what we are all about in this tribe. When we make a conscious effort to re-socialize ourselves, it is not going to come easy. The entire thought process needs to be reprogrammed. The past programs need to be defragmented and literally rebooted. I, I put it this way. We are in a revolving carousel. So those thoughts of the past created emotions in us. And the results of those old emotions created beliefs in us. And then those beliefs that were created 
okay, from those emotions began to influence the same thoughts that they had. And the cycle keeps going unhindered. We need change. We need education. We need empowerment in order to break out of the old mold and into a newness. And it's going to come at a cost. It's painful. It's not going to be something that you're going to sit down and just saddle through. So change, as I will put it, okay, or as we advocate in, in, in using um, the, the census pills, comes with its own challenges. The challenges here is that, or are that, it's going to be unfamiliar and uncomfortable. The entire person's state of being, everyone's state of being, literally, is in the past, in the past socialized system. And the hardest part about change is not making the same choices as you did the day before. That's not the hardest part about change, okay? The hardest part about change is making different choices from the one you did before. The period and the moment you decide to make a different choice get ready because it's going to feel uncomfortable it's going to feel unfamiliar however if you do not resocialize yourself and feed your minds with new thoughts and new programs just like my favorite book says okay and i would i like to project this in a positive manner my favorite book teaches me that we as a people are preserved and experience success with an abundance of knowledge. Now, if I put it on the flip side, the way it's actually projected in the good book, it says, my people perish for lack of knowledge. Okay, that's how he puts it. But I'm saying that the flip side of that, or the converse of that is, we as a people will be preserved and we're going to experience success when we have an abundance of knowledge. If you do not rewire your mind, then you will still be operating in the past. And the past is what has created in us poor health and compromised immune systems. Case in point, Boris Johnson. His immune system is heavily compromised. And that's why he is in ICU right now. So guys, we really do underestimate the power of our minds. Uh, the, the, the power of the mind is greatly underestimated. And... In, in progressing with this podcast, I'd like to, to, to take an example um, to make this get home, to drive this home. I'm, I'm, I'm really using this initial lengthy podcast, once I'm creating now, to lay a good foundation for the ones I'm going to create subsequent. So this podcast has been quite lengthy for the five minutes, some 50, some over, over an hour. But we're going to be having smaller podcasts, which are going to be between five and ten minutes. Okay. Now, this is what I want to take us through. I want to take a play through this example. Now, the first thing a child in a playground does when he or she falls, and when he or she falls off a swing and possibly onto a soft landing, is to immediately and unconsciously look at the parent. Okay. And any authority figure around that person. So if it's not the parent, it could be the sibling, the older sibling. Now, if that authority figure, okay, becomes like panicky and hilarious, then unconsciously and automatically, the child or the kid starts crying. However, if that authority figure, in this case, let's, let's use the mother, if she goes, oh, get up and get back on the swing, guess what happens? the child gets back on the swing and it's all systems back to normal. Now, this is a reflection of the cultural medium that that child is being socialized in, the reaction that child gave on the playground. It's a reflection of what his or her mother did and he responded to that particular response by the mother, okay? 
So you have to recognize that a child is going to observe every move of yours. Now I'm referring to you as a parent or as a person of authority. And then you also have to recognize that as a person of authority in the child's life, that if 95% of that child's makeup is coming from an invincible subconscious programming, then I, as an authority figure, I'm going to pass on the family pattern rather unconsciously to my child. I hope that makes sense. Now, once you realize that, okay, once you realize that, then you as an authority figure in your child's life, you begin to live more conscious of what you do. You begin to be more, more aware of what you expose your child or your kids to seeing. Now, you're going to be more aware of what we say and how we think, how we behave and how we react when around that particular child. Most especially around a child who is still in a meditation-like hypnotic state. That is when, that is the, the period where the programs that the child needs to sort in life um, are being, are being imprinted on the child's mind, okay, from being born to around seven years old. The gateways to success in a child's life are acquired through the child mirroring the environment, through learning, through memory, through imagination and fairy tales and also through intuition which is what is done in a theta state now a child in a, in a, in a theta state which is like a hypnotic state believes that alice in wonderland exists and this is simply because a child below seven has a lower vibration than consciousness and that is why it's called theta. Theta is imagination. When I say theta, theta, beta or beta, okay? This is how kids play. They conjure up imaginary things in their minds. They conjure up this tea party with mud, pies and plastic kettles. To them, it's the real thing. A kid rides a broom. To that child, it is a horse. Now, that's the theta imagination. Theta is also hypnosis. And the idea is that before you can become conscious, if you don't have any programs, what are you going to be conscious of? Absolutely nothing. It's, it's sort of like um, I buy a new iPod and I take, out, I take out the iPod from the box and I push on the play button and then nothing happens. Then I begin to flip. I begin to throw my cards you know, out, out, out of the box. I, I, I begin to, I get very livid and very, um, very anxious. And then I, I think to myself, oh my goodness, I spent all that money and the flipping thing isn't working. And then here comes your seven year old kid. He comes up and he says, dad, you have not downloaded any music yet. So how are you going to play something off your iPod? Well, that is the same thing with our minds. It's the same thing with the operating and socializing of our minds. It's like the brain, in this instance, is the iPod. Then consciousness, in this instance, is the screen where I can create. However, if I don't have anything in the hard drive of that iPod, I still can't create. I need the software. I need the programs. So nature, what, mean, what nature does is this. Nature makes the first seven years the period when our minds are programmed. And after those first seven years, then how do we learn? We learn through repetition, through memorizing, and through practice. Okay? The same way you will learn how to drive, repetition, practice or learn the alphabets from A to Z, repetition and practice. And once you've acquired that knowledge, you don't go back to it. It's instilled and installed in your subconsciousness. So the sort of programs that are required to live on this planet are initially acquired by all of us in a state, in a, in a, in a theta state. 
okay, which is through childhood hypnosis. And don't get off, don't run off saying what is Jimash speaks saying about hypnosis. I mean, by hypnosis, I mean where you just watch and learn. You watch your parents, you watch your siblings, you watch your community. Every one of us needs and has to learn so many hundred thousand rules. So think about it. I mean, just to be a functional member of a family and to be a functional member of, of a community, there are rules. So do we just sit down and physically teach an infant all those rules? No, you don't have to do that alone. Yes, you could do that. That's part of the learning process. Um, we, 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 we can teach them in a different way and it becomes a different learning system. And that is what we are advocating here. And that is what we believe in this particular tribe. We believe that the first seven years of a child's life, they're just capturing everything they see, hear, smell, and touch. They are very data observant and they just download everything around them. It's automatic. So why, why is this relevant? It's relevant because we are part of a new tribe. We need to reprogram the nine pills in this toolbox kit into our subconsciousness. And we can do that only by educating ourselves. These nine pills are somewhat, they're like new lessons. Well, to some of us, some of us are already practicing this without actually realizing it. And just like a child, we need to form our new optimal health and, wa and wealth lives consciously, okay? Which then becomes an unconscious act because we are, we've gone beyond that stage as adults. So if we consider ourselves as children in these matters, in matters concerning the nine pills, then the application here is that we need to reprogram our minds. It is relevant because this is the fact I'm gonna state now. It is a fact, okay, that 95% of our lives are formed in the foundational years, the formation years of our lives. That is a fact, and you can't dispute that fact. And it's done through the subconsciousness. 95% of what a child becomes, okay, they, they come from those programs in the subconsciousness that he or she experiences or has experienced every day up till they're seven years old. It's only about 5% of our lives that constitute where we actually use and apply our consciousnesses. Not 5%. Now, when I say applying our, our, our consciousnesses, it is always being creative. Now that accounts for 5% of our minds. It's the things that we are taught in school or through a formal um, education system. So essentially, your life is being lived from the programs installed, even though you think you're living your life. Now, now the thing is, you don't see it because it's called subconscious or subconsciousness. It's below consciousness. So you don't actually see it. Okay. I'm, I'm going to repeat myself again to make this sink in better. And, and, that's, and that's because it's part of what the principles that we are passing across in this tribe is repetition is a way in which we recondition and reprogram our minds. So I'm going to, you're going to catch me doing that through this particular podcast. Okay. So what we are talking about is the state. It's the stage where my favorite book, one of the, one of the verses in my favorite book um, says, this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth but you shall meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to observe and do according to all that is written in it. We've established that just observing and watching one's parents daily or the authority figures in a child's life and also watching the siblings and the immediate community around that child. It could be the crash, it could be teachers, it could be the neighbors. Now, these figures, these authority figures, they are the role players in that child's life 
that constitutes the most part of the child's realm of authority and learning. So when the child watches what they do, then what they see, what they learn, what they hear, then becomes their lifestyle. So we as authority figures need to be made or to become more aware of this or more conscious of this. So we need to realize this is the stage, this is the part um, where this is the part where I believe we, we've created this African proverb that says it takes a village to raise a child. So as mentioned, that particular child that the village is raising has to learn many hundreds of thousands of rules. I mean, just think about it. And he learns those rules from his cultural medium, that is from his environment. So just being, for that child to be a functional member of a family and a functional member of a community, there are rules. Teach an infant as many of these rules in the first seven years, and you have a well-trained man for the rest of his life. Now, kids are, like I mentioned, they are data observant and just download this data and store it in their physical memory. These then become hardwired in their subconsciousness and becomes what I call their epigenetic disposition. They are no longer victims of the so-called hereditary genes. They have now moved into a realm above their genes, uh, their genes and are now in control of their own destinies. You lose control when you assume you are run or ruled by your genes. You gain control when you live above the genes. That's, that's what the word epigenetics means. It means above the genes. It is a scientific fact that 95% of our lives comes from those programs in our subconscious minds downloaded in those first seven years. And only about 5% of our lives is about us using our consciousnesses or our conscious minds. Our conscious minds, they're being the creative part of our lives. Essentially, the programs stored in our minds can only be reprogrammed through a deliberate set of, of actions, steps, and effective daily meditation. These steps will help to reprogram the mind to the point where we will then be able to fulfill the very purpose of why we are created. My favorite book puts it so well by saying that we do not need or we, we, we do not conform to the pattern of what we have been taught or socialized in, but we are transformed by the reprogramming and renewing of our minds so that we will be able to test and approve what the purpose of our living is in the absolute will of the Creator. Now, if you are an atheist, then I'm sorry, I cannot help you with your belief system. What we will need to do is what my favorite book teaches, storing up new programs in our hearts, in our minds, so that we might do right and achieve optimal health and wealth, thereby will fulfill our purpose. And that is why, and this is essentially why we have this eighth pill, that's the education and empowerment pill. We have the education and empowerment pills as the pill and the nine pill toolkit to provide us the stimulus to realize that change is, 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 is extremely essential. We as adults are lost. We are bought into and socialized by an old and outdated education system. Our children are the next target. The education and empowerment pill, being part of the nine pill tool, will help us um, not to stay conformed to the outdated data on health and wealth, which have been passed on to us through our cultural mediums and environments by those authority figures in our lives. We do not stay conformed. However, we get transformed through the renewal of our minds so that by putting to test these new software programs, we may be in a better position to understand and fulfill our purpose and subsequently live a good, acceptable, and close to perfect life as closely as we reprogram and renew our minds. It's a reflection of the efforts we put in, which could be very, very painful. So essentially, if you believe that your thoughts have something to do with your destiny, and you can't think 
higher than how you feel, then what happens is that our feelings have then become the means of our thinking. And then our body is now in control of our minds. Then by very definition of emotions, we are then thinking in the past. We are then operating the programs subconsciously, fed into our hardware. We are going to be leaving out 95% of who we have been programmed to be without basically saying, without, without our permission. Okay? Then for the most part, we are going to keep creating the same life expectations and getting end results both in health and wealth. And this will predispose us, okay, to being victims of our hereditary and genetic makeup, as opposed to us living above our genes, which is living above our DNAs. We, 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 a lot of us have, have embraced the fact that, no, we are ruled and owned by our genes. Okay? Now, now for the benefit of, of us being on the same page, and for me not assuming we have the same understanding, when we use gene in, in the context of consciousness and subconsciousness, what we are actually saying is, as a, as, a, as a part of this tribe, is that our genes that we need to live above is, is that unit of hereditary, which is transferred from at least one of our parents or a person or persons of authority over us or to us. It could be um, um, as in us being off, off, off offsprings of that particular person. And when we hold on to this genetic transferred behaviors or attitudes, it then determines some characteristics of us and we then become an end product of that authority figure. I hope I'm making sense. So just, just so we are clear about our genes and, and DNA, let me just take some time to, to explain this. Um, our DNAs, okay? Um, so our, 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 our DNAs contain our chromosomes, okay? And our chromosomes contain the blueprint for our body. Essentially, our blueprints are our genes. Almost every cell in the human body contains a copy of this blueprint, mostly stored inside a special sac um, within each cell called the nucleus. So chromosomes are like your long, they're like long strands, okay, of, of a chemical um, substance. And that's and that's and they're called the DNA. It's got a chemical name, deoxy something. Okay, but essentially DNA. So the chromosomes are those long strands of 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 your DNA. So if you change the composition of the nucleus of each cell, then you have changed the the DNA. You've changed the genes of the body. Okay. So how is that relevant to us here? Change the cultural medium. Change the environment that the body is subjected to. Subject the mind to a new set of programs. And what you will do is that you will ultimately change the expression of the person. You will change the personality of that person. And in changing the, that person's personality, you will successfully change the personal reality of that person. It's as simple as that. Let me try and contextualize this. Okay. Now, we know of Prince Harry, of the, of the British royal family. We know that he's spoken um, about his mental health and how he's been in therapy for the, for the past few years to try overcome the trauma of losing his mother, um, Princess Diana. He's talked about how the events of his childhood affected him and that he's been, and as a consequence, he's been, he's been talking to a, a mental health professional. I think he still does that up to date for counseling. Now, Harry also touched on, on Mexit. 
saying while it has been it was very difficult on him and, and Megan, he does not regret the decision they made to step down as senior royals. And you know why? Because he wants to protect his family. Now, what Harry has said and what he's gone on record to say is this. He, he said that he doesn't want Megan and their son, Archie, to go through what he did as a child. He doesn't want that. He, he says that the experience that he's had is that once you start talking about, about those things in his own history, in his own past, that you realize that you are actually part of quite a big club. Okay? Harry has recognized that he's part of a big culture. He's part of a structure that he can he cannot change. So he had to get out of it. And and Harry has said that losing his mom at the age of 12 made him shut down all of his emotions for the last 20 years. Harry is about 32 years old now. And in doing that, it's, it's had a, a, a huge and serious effect on not only his personal life, but also his work life. Now, let me stop there for a second. Did you hear what I just mentioned? Did you hear what I just said, Ari said? Okay, I, I'm going to repeat. Let, let me try and quote him to put that in, in better context. I can safely say that losing my mom at the age of 12 and therefore shutting down all of my emotions for the last 20 years has had a quite serious effect on not only my personal life, but my work life as well. Essentially, that personality that Harry picked up as a result of losing his mother when he was 12 and all the events surrounding that life that, that, that life um, um, changing events, losing his mom, created his new personal reality. Up until that time, before he lost his mom, he had a different personality, and therefore he had a different personal reality. The moment she was killed, or he lost his mother, that changed his personality and essentially changed his personal reality. His personal reality affected the reality of his life and changed his emotions, which changed the way he thought, which then changed the way he behaved. His feelings were ruling his thinking. I mean, do we get this? Uh, I'm trying to put across uh, a point. So now Harry has reached a stage in his life where he either keeps in a place of pain or moves into a place of pleasure. Remember that we as human beings are motivated by two states of being, pain and pleasure. We are motivated to reduce pain and to increase pleasure. So, so, so Prince Harry, who uh, unfortunately, unfortunately Donald Trump has gone on record to say, I think two weeks ago, today being the 8th, today is the 8th of April, um, Donald Trump said um, he's not going to pay, or America is not going to pay for um, Prince Harry and Meghan's security as they relocate to the states from Canada. Okay, so, so Prince Harry has had to decide to reprogram his subconsciousness and he has taken the right decision that he cannot keep being subjected to his genes, his natural hereditary. And he said to himself, I need to live above my genes, above his hereditary, above his socialized life. And he had to do that in order to experience a newness in life, a new purpose, and for him to fulfill a better quality of life. Now, guess what? Is it going to be easy? Of course not. It is not going to be easy, of course not. It isn't. Is it going to be um, unfamiliar? Of course, yes. Is it going to be beneficial? Well, the jury is out there. However, Harry has decided 
in his own mind. And he's, he's, he's been quoted as saying that I do not want Megan and our son Archie to go through what I did as a child. So what Prince Harry is doing is what the rest of us need to do in order to change our destinies. We need to do that. And it's two states of being pain and or pleasure. The environment, Harry, and very specifically his perception, his perception of the environment that he was socialized and grew up in became literally became exposed. And this only became exposed when he became aware of himself. He is on record saying that he has probably been very close to a complete breakdown on numerous occasions when all sorts of grief and all sorts of lies and misconceptions and a lot of things were coming to him from different angles. So what he did not realize was that over the years, all those stressors changed his genetic disposition. They changed his, his activities and caused him to live as a victim of and to his environment until he realized that, hold on, if I can change my environment, then I can change my perception. And then if I can change my perception, then all of a sudden, if I can do just that, then I can control my life's blueprint and my life's reality as well. So Harry went on from being a victim to mastery. From as, as my peel, what I, what I explained on my peel on, on, on eugenics, um, as I illustrated, he moved from genetics to epigenetics. Go listen to that podcast. I, I took time to explain um, epigenetics. Uh, it's my podcast on epigenetics. Okay, so, but for, 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 for us now to achieve huge success in, in shifting the, 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 our minds or in shifting our paradigm, we need and everyone needs a support system. So in, 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 in Harry's case, the, the royal institution, just like the big pharma and the food industries, had a huge monopoly over his life. Okay, And you just cannot change their philosophies. You need to come out of them. So big pharma has got its own philosophy on how we should be doused with petrochemical or the nonsense that we are giving. So does the, the royal institution has its own philosophy on how you conduct yourself as a part of the royal family. Now, my, my, my favorite book um, states that the process of the mind renewal is a long and tedious one that requires each person cutting off and deciding to renew, which means to take out the old way of thinking, take out the old way of doing things and into a new way. And that is why we created the Censuses Toolbox Kit, the nine pills in them. We created this to create a tribe with a support structure, a tribe with nine pills that you can take on a daily basis in order to achieve the change that is so necessary. Change that comes with accountability. It comes with unfamiliarity and it comes with pain. It is not going to be an easy road. So in Prince Harry's case, since it's been used now as an illustration to put across the, 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 the issue that we need to reprogram our minds, and to do that, we need to get out of our existing environment. So Prince Harry identified that he, he needed a support structure. And what did he do? He eventually sought support with the increment of his brother, okay, Prince William, and others close to him. He told himself that, look, you really need to deal with this. It is not normal to think that nothing has affected you. Now, this is Harry speaking to himself. He knew and he knows that the experience that um, he was going to uh, he was going to he was going to um, be faced up to is that once he starts talking about it, he would realize that. 
he's actually part of quite a big club. Once he starts vocalizing and getting out of that mindset that has kept him bound up until the time of realization, once you start talking about it, you realize that you're part of a big club and this big club is set to keep you down. That the same applies to us in our culture environment when it comes to health. Now, Prince Harry realized that he was never going to beat an established system. He knew he had no chance kicking against it. He realized his only chance of living a near to real life was to move away from the system that he was socialized in. He took a decision to create his own system. What did he say? I do not want Megan and our son Archie to go through what I did as a child. So we are a tribe, or we are part of a tribe, set up to start talking about issues and matters that directly and indirectly affect us. Matters that will determine the quality of life that we aspire to live and pass on to at least four generations after us. I'm quite excited that we can pass things beyond our existence. We call it legacy. Okay? And the good book states that God will visit the iniquity of the fathers on the children and the children's children to the third and fourth generations. Okay? Now, we need to realize this, and this is in the realm of the creator, okay, in the realm of the supernatural being that I believe and we in this tribe believe exist. Now understand that if there is a curse, then of essence there is a blessing. So curses are the direct opposite, opposite of blessings. Negative is the opposite to positive, okay? And I believe that it's it's a scientific fact which I established um during during my my, my 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 launch podcast on the 15th of february in in Bush khalifa i established the fact i made mention of the fact that the hormones of stress down regulate our genes and over a period of time if that is sustained it creates disease in us and why is that a point why is that a fact now, human beings, um, because of the, of the size of the neocortex, we can turn on the stress response just by thought alone. We can ignite the thought, or we can ignite the stress response, referring to cortisol. So, as we think about our problems, we can turn on the cortisol hormone. Okay, we understand that. And then we get stressed and we get sick as a result of that. You are in this you're in this in a in a fight or, or you're in a fight and flight state. And if that is prolonged, it's not you just trying to escape from a, a lion or a tiger, it's you being in a constant environment of stress that changes your disposition. And over a period of time, it creates it creates disease in you. Okay, so that means that if our thoughts could make us sick, so if it's possible that our thoughts could make us sick, then according to the law of polari um, polarity, okay, opposites being um, simply different manifestations of the same thing, the law of polarity, okay, then is it possible applying the law of polarity that if our thoughts could make us sick, is it possible then that our thoughts could make us well, could make us recover, could make us healthy? The answer is absolutely yes. So in that, I, I went through that to say this. So if, and because God has said that he will visit the blessings or the iniquities of um, the fathers upon the children and the children's children to the third and the fourth generation. We've established the fact that um, a, a curse is the opposite of a blessing. 
So in that instance, God will visit the blessings of the fathers on the children and the children's children to the third and the fourth generations. We can pass on the effects of a renewed and revamped physiology and subconsciousness right down to four generations after us. It's all a matter of our regenerated and reconditioned minds. Guys, welcome to using the education and empower pills. Welcome to Census 9 pills. Welcome to having a choice to recondition, to change our subconsciousnesses. Humans are motivated by pain and by pleasure. In a state of well-being, in a state of absolute control of your senses at this point in time, choose the path of pain to break away from what you've been conditioned to as a result of the first seven years of your subconsciousness which has then become 95 percent of your existence you make that choice and step out of the old familiar programs and reprogram your mind with new programs reset reboot your hardware. I'm going to close now on the education and empower pill. We've come a long way. It's taken me, I think, about five podcasts to go through just this pill. And I'm glad I took that time because this lays a foundation for subsequent speaks in regards to what we'll be putting out to members of the tribe. Okay. We are creating a new conversation we are creating a new tribe we are creating a new people we are creating a new future and when you think good you feel good when you feel good you do good that is what we as a tribe stand for that is what we believe as a tribe it is it's, it's how we spend ourselves, not our money, that makes us rich. Rich in the sense of wealth and health. How do we spend ourselves? My challenge to this tribe, to these people, to you listening to this podcast, is take, embrace, use the nine pills, use it on a daily basis, reprogram your mind, and you will see the benefits begin to happen in your life. You will have your 95% subconsciousness reprogrammed with new ideologies, new belief systems, new ways of doing things, different from what we have been socialized in. We are going through a pandemic now, COVID-19. Doctors, pharmacists, governments, professors, the learned, the, the high and the mighty, have all been muted. Nobody knows what to do because the programs we had in terms of what we have been socialized in could not help us to overcome or up to now, today being the 7th or the 8th of April, to overcome this pandemic. So I'm going to keep talking, so I'm going to put this to an end now. I'm closing on the education and empower pill and I'm titling this 008C-2, Empower to Live. This is the eighth pill in this system. Okay. We have completed Empowered to Live. Next up, next up, next up is the last pill in this toolbox kit. It's the success pill. There is just one last pill in this nine pill system. Please look forward to this pill and it's going to bring to close the foundation of the nine pills in the census toolbox kit. Stay tuned. In the meantime, please check my website www.gmashspeaks.com and my personal website www.georgemashigo spelled G-E-O-R-G-E-M-A-S-H-I-G-O dot com and you can check my YouTube channel George Mashiho for other podcasts. Stay blessed. Remain strong. 
when you think good you feel good when you feel good you do good i'm out of here cheers <laughs>